that awkward that I just sat there? I couldn't even look at you all because I felt so awkward. We don't like waiting in our culture. We don't, right? It used to be that it took months to get to Oregon and people used to die doing it. And now we play a game called Oregon Trail and my cousin who lives in Oregon can just jump on a plane and come visit me for my wedding. We are a society that doesn't like to wait. It used to be that we celebrated Advent and then Christmas, right? And we decorated usually Thanksgiving or some people even decorated their tree on Christmas Eve. And now Black Friday sales are when? October? Like, come on! We want to rush. And yet the church says, slow down. We are this awkward group of people that instead of singing Joy to the World and Silent Night and O Come All Ye Faithful, we're going to spend a couple weeks singing O Come, O Come Emmanuel, the advent of our God, the longing for something better. We in the church are going to tap the brakes. Even when our culture wants to push us onward, and even my fluttering heart wants to be like, how long can I make it without losing my nerve? The text that Sandy read is actually the lectionary text for today. And what's funny, I love this, Sandy, she actually said, Are you sure? like, I want to just make sure that this is the right text, because it seems kind of weird for Advent, right? The end times, and be awake, and be alert, and what's going to happen? We, as a culture, especially, I pick on my own tradition, we Presbyterians are not necessarily good at watching and waiting and being awake, right? That's what Jesus is talking about. He talks about the, the sunset and the midnight hour and the cock crows and the sunrise. And do you know what? That is exactly the time period that Mark then talks about later in the, the narrative of Jesus' death. Those pivotal hours of his life. And we're to be awake and to watch and to pray. But if I'm honest, in our culture, the people who are super ready for Jesus to return are typically marginalized as a little crazy. They make predictions and wait for the return. I remember in college, my good friend, my roommate, had a good friend that I was nominally friends with. And her friend Jill came bursting into our room one morning. Jesus is coming back, she says with light and excitement in her eyes. I have a dream that Jesus is coming back, so I'm not doing homework. <laughs> Would you like to know what this Presbyterian said? <laughs> yeah, that's great. <clears throat> I didn't get that dream, so I'm doing my homework. My roommate attended to agree with me, while Jill, God love her, flitted around for a week not doing homework because she was convinced that Jesus was coming back. So why bother? She was a little too heavenly minded. But we, I think, sometimes have the opposite problem. We live life and we forget that it's not all about here and now. In October, we had a rough month as a community. We lost four students, and for my family, my children lost an adult in this church that they cared very much about. Right? And I got called into all of those circumstances. And one of my children literally prayed, Dear Jesus, please come back so people will stop dying. And I had this thought as my good Presbyterian upbringing, I have never prayed that prayer in my life. I have this cognitive assent that when Jesus returns, things will be better. When I go to heaven, things will be better. But my reality is I am striving and working in the here and now. 
And I forget that things are going to be better in the future. And so my challenge for us um, is to find a space between. A space between, I'm not going to stop doing anything. I'm not going to do any homework and I'm not going to do anything because I just, Jesus is going to come back and make everything better. But I don't think we can stay in this reality that we just forget that the best is yet to come. That the only time we think about it is on Christmas Eve or when we lose a loved one and we remember the resurrection of the body. Maybe when we say the Apostles' Creed and we say those words. But generally speaking, we don't let the future reality affect our day to day. And Jesus calls us to be awake, to be alert, <coughs> and to live in this reality. There's another tension that I find, and I wonder if you can relate. We also are very good at the good Protestant American work ethic, right? We're good at getting things done. And there is a concept in our culture that if you're not doing anything, it's passivity, right? You're waiting, you're watching. This is why we have a problem in our culture. When my husband walks away from the restaurant table, I am tempted to get out my phone and answer an email until he comes back. Because sitting still seems like the opposite of what we're called to be and do. But Jesus calls his disciples to wait and watch for his return. So how do we also, just as we're not supposed to live like, like Jesus is coming back tomorrow and not do anything about making the world a, a better place, more like the kingdom of God, and also not ignoring it, how do we also wait, not with passivity, but not with rushing around? Which I think is a really important message for Advent, because how many of you have already started Christmas shopping? How many of you have already started making lists? How many of you have started baking and wonder how you're going to get it all done in the next 22 days? How do we live in the space between sitting in passivity and running around like crazy people? I confess I am not a hunter. And that is plainly obvious when I moved to Sandy Lake. I grew up in a family that didn't hunt. And my husband's family didn't hunt. We have no concept of this. But I've learned from you. And when you are sitting in your tree stand, you are waiting with anticipation that something will come along. You're not plowing through the fields trying to get the deer to leave their hiding spots. But neither are you sitting, playing on your phone, pretending like nothing is going to happen? There is this hopeful expectation that the nine point might come out. This hopeful wondering and watching that it's going to happen today. It's waiting, but it's active. So our challenge today in the midst of a culture that wants to push us to Christmas, in a culture that wants to tell us that we've got to get it all done, there is a call in this countercultural idea of Advent to put the brakes on, to pause, to wait, to watch. The promise is that this is not the end of the story. Jesus does promise to return. That's what we celebrate in Advent. Not just that Jesus came, but that Jesus will come again. And so how do we be intentionally different than the frantic pace of our culture? And what might that look like in your life? Living in these tensions. Not but also not being a functional atheist, doing everything ourselves. How do we not be passive, sitting around doing nothing? One of my favorite stories from one of my youth that I worked with before I came here, he went on a mission trip to YWAM with a group called YWAM, and he came back from nine months of missionary experience. And he and his friends were sitting
been playing a video game and he was asking them what God was having them do next. And his friend, he was so frustrated, his friend was like, I don't know. And so he's like, so what are you doing? Well, I'm sitting playing video games until God tells me what to do. And so for months, this young man sat and played video games because he was waiting for God to tell him what to do. We're not called to just be passive. But we're not called to act like everything depends on us either. So this Advent, we need to keep awake. Be like the person in the tree stand that has this helpful understanding that God is going to do something in our day. That God is at work and active and is the light all around us. Thank you, Wendy. Right? That God is here. And God will also come again. Put the brakes on. Take a deep breath. And maybe our prayer this Advent is not just slow me down, but help me to see. Will you pray with me? Lord God, I don't, I don't know about everybody else, but I struggle to be still. I struggle to be in this place of wakeful, hopeful anticipation. But we lit the candle of hope today, Lord. And we are trying to live as people who are awake, who are watching, who are hopeful in the idea that you are at work in our world, in us and through us, and you will come again and make all things right. Help us live as people who are in between, in between the polarizing forces of our world, resting in you. We pray this in Jesus' name.